Hey. So what we're doing today is we're gonna take a look at the brake pads on our 2012 Sportster. Now, brakes are important. You need them to stop, obviously. But the problem is brake pads do wear down a little bit every time you press the brakes. There's a wee little bit of friction material on there on the pads that rubs on the rotors and it slowly wears away a little bit. Now, unlike your car, there's no little squealer pad or anything. So you don't have any notice when the pads are wore down. What you really have to do is get in there and make a visual inspection of it periodically to know you still have brake pads left. Today, we're gonna to pull the caliper off and we'll see what's going on in there. And we'll maybe even swap out the brake pads and you'll be able to see what we're actually visually inspecting in there. And it's super easy to do. There's only two bolts that hold your brake caliper on. Anybody can do this in their driveway or in their garage. Let's get right to it. First thing we're gonna do, your caliper is held on your front caliper here. It's held down by these two bolts that bolt up to the rotor. In this case, we're gonna take a 10 millimeter, yes, I said 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter 12 point, and we're gonna put it on there and break these free. And whenever you take anything off, you wanna break all the bolts free, then remove them. Keeps things from binding up. Hold on to your caliper, make sure it doesn't fall off. You don't want to let it pull on the brake line too hard. But the bolt should slide out of there. And then from there, you can slide it up off the brake rotor. But now that we have the brake caliper off, we can actually see what's going on in here. So this is the actual brake pad here in itself. And we have a backing plate here. And then this black material right here is the friction material. Now this is what actually slows down your bike. It's what actually rubs on the rotor, and this slowly wears away a wee little bit on here. The big question is, how do I know when the brake pads are bad? So the minimum thickness on your brake pads is 40 thousandths of an inch, but nobody really knows what 40 thousandths of an inch is. A dime is 50 thousandths of an inch. So when this material here gets around the thickness of a dime, you don't need to replace them today, but you better think about replacing your brake pads soon. And of course, Lowbrow Customs has all your brake pads needs covered, especially for sportsters. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at taking the actual brake pads off. So on this 2012, you have a little flathead set screw here. And this is just held in by a flathead screwdriver. And you can back that off of there. Take that out, set it in a safe place. Then underneath here, there's an Allen screw. So you're gonna take your Allen wrench or your, your hex head wrench, break that free and spin that pin out. So this pin right here actually holds the pads in. You can lefty loosey that sucker right on out of there. And then you can just slide that pin out of there. You might want to hold on to your brake pads because they're about to fall out. From there, you can slide each brake pad out of here. Now we'll set the caliper down off the side, take a look at the brake pads. All right, so now we have the brake pads off the caliper. So we can again take a look at the thickness of the brake material on here. So this right here is the friction material that actually rubs against your rotor and slows your bike down. You want to make sure you keep this clean of grease and stuff like that. And you can tell how thick it is by this gap for this right here. You can actually see the thickness of it. Now the minimum thickness of that brake pad is uh, 40 thousandths of an inch. A dime is 50 thousandths of an inch. So if you kind of place a dime up here, as long as this is at least the thickness of a dime or thicker, you're good to go. If they get down to the thickness of the dime, you don't need to replace the pads today, but you probably want to order them and put it on your to-do list to do pretty soon. These ones are sitting in pretty good shape, so we're just gonna put them right back on here. If you're gonna replace your brake pads, so you have to remember that as your pads wear down, there's pistons in here that actually move out a little bit further each time, and that takes up for that slop of that pad that wore down. When you get new pads, they're gonna be much thicker. This piston here is going to be pushed way out. So you have to recompress it before you can get the new pads in there. And sometimes you can get away with doing this with your thumbs. Sometimes you'll have to use a C-clamp or some form of a special tool. Now this has two calipers or two pistons here inside the caliper. So when we put the C-clamp on, we're gonna to try to grab both pistons with the jaw of the C-clamp. If you can't do that for some reason, you can use your old brake pad as kind of a backing material. You wanna use your old one because it might chew up the pad a little bit. So don't use the new ones. So we're gonna put the C-clamp in here. And we're gonna tighten it up a little bit. And this shouldn't take very much force. We're just gonna tighten up the C-clamp a little bit and it recompresses the pistons way back up in there. 
And once those are compressed all the way down, you're ready to put your new brake pads in. To do that, first, you wanna make sure you still have your little springs up in here. There's a little spring here at the top and there's some metal backing plates. These little springs keep a wee little bit of tension on your brake pads and that keeps them from squealing. So if your pads squeal a lot all the time, you might wanna look at replacing one of these springs. But we're gonna take our pads, slide them back in place, and we're gonna make sure our friction material is pointing in because the friction material will go up against the rotor. So you have this little tab here that goes all the way back up in there on your right. You can put the other pad in. And remember, your friction material goes in and goes towards your rotor. You'll slide both of those in place. Then you can take your pin, slide it through your caliper mount, and through the pad, like so. And once it gets up in there, you can take your 3 16 Allen wrench, tighten that sucker up. You just want to tighten this up until it bottoms out up in there. Then from there, you can take your set screw, make sure you put the little flathead slot out, thread that back in there, and tighten that up with your flathead screwdriver, and tighten it up until it bottoms out. Now you're ready to reinstall your brake caliper. So spread your pads out a wee little bit. Remember, your rotor is going to go in between the two. Then from there, you can take the caliper, slide it up over top of the rotor. Then from there, you can start in your two bolts. And you wanna run both of these in here finger tight first before you tighten either one of them down. So we'll run them both in finger tight until they stop. Now that our brake caliper is on there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to torque these to spec. So I have a torque wrench here, and we're gonna to torque this to 32 foot-pounds. But check your service manual, or your owner's manual, or the forums, and get the torque spec for your year bike. Now when you do this, make sure they're ran in until they're tight. Snug both of them up. Then you're gonna pull on it, and you should hear and feel your torque wrench click, or beep if you have a fancy torque wrench. That little clunk right there means it's torque to spec. Don't go any further. And go to your top one here and do the same. So right there, we know the bolts are torque to spec. A lot of people worry that your, your front caliper bolts are gonna pull out or back out or something. It is your front brake, so it's important. So one of the tricks I like to do, I'll take a little felt tip pen or magic marker, and I'll put a little dot on the bolt once it's torque to spec at 12 o'clock on each one of these. 12 o'clock on the position of the bolt. This way I can do a walk around in the morning before I go to work or if I'm at a gas station on a trip or something like that. I can do a walk around, I can look at that little dot there. As long as it's at 12 o'clock still, I know the bolts are still torqued to spec. If all of a sudden I look at one, it's nine o'clock, hey, we got problems, I need to take a look at what's going on there. But it's just an easy reference to know your stuff's still tight. Now, the final step for doing this, you, since you compress your caliper piston way out, now there's a little bit of an air gap in between your pads and your front rotor. So we're gonna pump the front brakes a few times to help build that back up, to reseat our pads in place, and then we'll be ready to go ride. So just take your front brake lever, pump it a couple times. And once you're ready to go ride out in your driveway, you can give up, give your brake lever pull, give your bike a little bit of a push forward with your handlebars, make sure your front brakes are doing their thing and grabbing. You don't want to wait till you're at a stop sign to find out your front brakes don't work. So that's all I really have for you. Hopefully you found this noble tech tip helpful. And if you need brake pads or any other replacement parts, lowbrowcustoms.com has you covered. We'll see you next time.